Hey, what up, everybody? You're listening to The Girls' Table, and Eden, welcome back. I'm Alana Dickman. I'm a partner at Redbeard Ventures, and we have Aiden Gold, a partner at Hyperguap. Super excited to have him back. At this point, I should probably just rebrand to the VC couple. Not actually, but Aiden is my fiance. Today, we're going to talk about something that's been kind of blowing up on Twitter right now, which is the Carta phenomenon. Um, just to kind of set base, so Carta is actually one of my biggest angel investments. I say that because I think it's important to provide some context. So my first investment ever was in SpaceX. After that, Aiden's uh, syndicate actually shared out the deal for Carta, utilizing Carta X, which we're going to dive into because actually Carta X is not a thing anymore. But long story short, we bought secondaries in Carta. At the time, it was obviously the bull market. I put a big check in and a lot of people have messaged me saying, hey, do you see everything that's happening with Carta? What are your thoughts? What's happening right now? And so I wanted to kind of touch base, tell everybody what's happening, give our thoughts. I'm going to provide a short little summary that Aiden obviously will dive in. But basically, long story short, a company that had their cap table on Carta basically put out that one of Carta's employees used the cap table to reach out to some of their investors. One happened to be a family member. They reached out. They said, are you looking at selling? Long story short, if they did say yes, they would put it on Carta X and they would have made like $100,000, Carta would, by selling these shares. That's what somebody actually calculated. So long story short, they found out that this was actually not okay because without their permission, they reached out to investors and Carta had access to all information, including the price they paid, their valuation, who their investors were, their information. Things blew up. They were like, you're using this information without our approval. Now Carta sent out a message saying they will no longer do Carta X. So there's no kind of problems with um, selling secondary shares within their marketplace. Aiden, what did I miss? What do you think about this? No, I think that's a great overview. And I think the, the whole promise of Carta was always this secondary idea that if we can provide the cap tables, which for, for those of you who don't know, a cap table is basically just like who are the stockholders of a private company? Um, how much shares they own, at what price, et cetera, et cetera. This was costing people hundreds of thousands of dollars in legal fees and on Excel to organize all this information for startups. Carta came around in about 2012 and was like, hey, we're going to make all this with software. So that's like their core business. Um, and they're like, hey, once we have all this information of everyone who can price different assets, then we can create like a liquid private market. So uh, employees can sell shares you know, before they have to go public because most companies don't make it to uh, IPO and create a more robust private market. And this was in the Carta Series A deck, which Henry kind of wrote a blog post about when he said that now they're now disbanding the secondary market. And I think, like you said, we invested in Carta uh, through Carta X, which is Carta X was their secondary platform. But it was always kind of complicated and hard to get off the ground because they launched it in the bull run of 2021 and then now all these companies have to like reprice and it's secondaries are always very like uh like cloak and dagger kind of type business uh like transactions because it's like who's selling why are they selling a decreased price is it showing a lack of faith and with all that information kind of public it would it can kind of scare people a bit so that's why the ceo freaked out and was just like why are you trying to sell like uh the shares of my investors, someone else. And so I don't know. I just feel like, like, do you think Carter should have retreated from the secondary market? Do you think it was like the right decision? I think given that everything that just happened, I think that was one of the kind of only moves that they can make to really build trust back for the people who have their cap table on Carta. Now, I just want to say that there are other platforms. We use specifically Hive, which is a great way to actually go ahead. If you're looking at buying a lot of secondary shares, you could use that. They don't have the cap table. So what it does if you're a seller? And for what Aiden kind of mentioned, who is a seller of these secondaries? It could be um, an early CEO that wants some liquidity. It could be an early investor. One recently that we saw was actually a company held shares of another company. That company was acquired. In that transaction, they got both equity and cash. And they were like, okay, well, we just want more cash. Our company was just acquired. So instead of holding those shares in the parent company that acquired the startup that they invested in, they actually sold those shares through the platform. 
So just want to state kind of those are some of the people who would be selling secondaries, really just early investors that want some liquidity too. But do I think Carta made a huge move in being like, hey, now we're actually done. I do think there was a conflict of interest. I think like if you have all this information, you have all the prices they pay, you have their contact information. It's just an easy, quick way. And sure, they could go up controls in place. I just think there is this conflict of interest by like you have all the information, you know what they sold. And now you're actually trying to get people to sell in this market. But what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, I think pr private market liquidity is tough because, you know, like people want to be investing in these companies for the right reasons, which is like to build an enduring company that can eventually become public and sustain. And when sometimes when there's too much liquidity in the private market, maybe you lose kind of that long term thinking mm -hmm. uh, that can happen. Um, and I, I like the way that Henry put it, where he, although we have all this data about all the companies and we could be uh, the middle, the exchange between investors and people who want to sell shares and things like that, uh, it's not our data. And I think that's like a really like prudent way to think about it. Uh, even if they weren't using the data, people would always be like, well, now you know what price I bought in. So you can easily offer that to another investor who might be interested. I still think though, like, this is a massive problem and maybe it's hive i think forge global is another company republic that, like, republic that like are trying to solve this um i don't know if like in the their secondary business wasn't doing a ton of revenue they said it was only doing like three million dollars in revenue i think maybe only a handful of companies use carta x it's like, extremely hard to to solve this problem in a way that works for all stakeholders holders you know yeah uh, but it's very real and i mean one of the most robust uh private companies we talked about last time spacex right all constantly doing secondary transactions not using carta x um because there's so many platforms and like sure they're not using carta x but they're using all the others it was obviously carta x was a newer platform when did they launch like 2021 2021 yeah 2021 so it's definitely newer I think they still have a huge business, but one other thing that I want to bring up is giving that I'm a syndicate kind of partner, what I'm seeing a lot is actually a lot of people switch off of it. They've obviously raised their costs a little bit. It's pretty expensive to go ahead and hold a syndicate. They don't do as much as some of the kind of services that Angelus provides. How do you feel that is from your perspective? You've obviously done some SCVs on Carta. And what do you think is the biggest value proposition that Carta has today as an investor? Well, I think uh, AngelList is much more for like the people who are just doing very simple SPVs, simple funds. There's only like a few toggles where Carta offers much more of like tailored to whatever your fund or SPV structure is working with your lawyers and helps like use software to just make it better. Mm -hmm. And so I just think it depends who you are. Like if you're a much larger fund, uh, like an A16Z or Sequoia, uh, I like probably over a hundred million, like Carta is probably a better platform because you're dealing with more institutional LPs that prefer like large wire transfers. It's more designed for that. But if you're like a smaller fund, you know, just like, low single digits, tens of millions. Mm -hmm. I think AngelList is like a bit simpler and that's what it's more designed for. So they're just kind of a little bit different offerings. And I mean, at the end of the day, like Carta's core business is the cap table business. They said it's doing about $250 million a year in revenue, which is crazy. Yep. I think a lot of people are like, how is a cap, cap table software going to be that big of a business? But $250 million a year is a real fucking business. And I think it's probably highly profitable at this point. They're a fun business. And doing just take a million step back yeah. really quick. So like that cap table business, we obviously both worked at startups before this. And what they do is they basically have their cap table. They give their early employees shares through Cardas or any other kind of features that they have in that cap table business. Well, yeah. So that's how you manage all your share count, mm -hmm. uh, at what price you determine the shares. So they do something they call a 409A valuation, which basically creates the fair market value for your share price. And they help, they're like the third party that does like an independent valuation of your company. So they can tell you what price the issue shares at. They help you figure out like preferred shares for investors and common shares. Basically everything that you need to run your cap table, like vesting schedules for employees, Carta helps you with and makes it really easy what the tax implications are of your shares, things like that. Uh, so yeah, that's like their core business. And with that, they're able to kind of recommend different offerings of like pricing of certain equity. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, they're able to figure out the data. No, for sure. And I think personally, I worked at the startup called Flowcast, and that's where I get all my vested shares. It's where you buy them. It's where you see the price it is right now. You could vest them, pay to actually get your shares. So I think they they are not canceled. There's something that came out there like, is Carta canceled? As an investor, I am still like, think it's a go-to platform for startups to use to actually go ahead and deal with their cap table. So I think even though they had this Carta X platform, I think there was a lot of value as an investor looking at it. I'm like, hey, if I want to sell my early shares in something, creating this liquidity in this startup industry and in venture capital is super important, but there are other products and other companies that are doing the same. So I don't think that means that card is done. I think they crossed a line. I think they shouldn't have access to this information. I think they should have had controls in place so that they weren't. But why doing is it this. so bad that they access that information? Because they are, they have, okay. So the way that Carta X worked is they actually got these from the buy side and the sell side. So really, they want to reach out to you and get whatever price possible because they got money. If you were like, hey, I want to sell, and they took a percent to then find a seller. So they always had this kind of headspace where they're like, hey, I want you they to want sell. To and they saw what price you paid. So then they were able to see what price you paid. Oh, hey, if you paid, if it was an early investor, usually you wouldn't know. If it was the latest round, sure, you would know what price they paid. But they see the early investors be like, oh, hey, they probably want liquidity now because they're an early investor. I can give you 10x. Yeah, I, yeah, I could give you 10x and I'll make money anyway. So like, I'll probably give you the cheapest option because like, whatever, you'll probably say, yes, you paid this amount. So like, there's a whole problem where like, you shouldn't have this information. Like, unless somebody made it public and they reach out being like, hey, I'm trying to sell these shares. Sure, maybe then you should be able to actually help them find. The way that high works is you actually put in, you're like, hey, I'm willing to pay this amount. And then buyers could go on and they could see, oh, hey, they're willing to pay. So I think he got overblown. Like, I mean, may maybe like that information is confidential, but it seems like they could have just, you know, like refined the product, taking feedback in public, uh, iterated on it, make sure people opted it in more, not do it, like make it more confidential. But I don't know. I feel like a little bit of it was overblown. They also lost the trust. Yeah. So like if so you had to earn the trust back, they had to earn the trust back. They had to make a big move. They're like, hey, we're not making that much money anyway from Carta X. Really? Like I never looked I, at I, it from I think, a secondary. Yeah. Yeah. Second. And I think they were losing a lot of money from Carta X. Too. Yeah. It was probably really expensive to run and really complicated. For all we know, they were probably going to cancel Carta X anyway. But, and then they just. But I think it. it's interesting because like you're seeing a lot of people talk about like, oh, like, uh, the cap table space is getting competitive. There's a company called Pulley, which you might have heard of. That's oh. like people are talking about with cap tables. But in my that's interesting, but, really, because I use it from a token perspective. Pulley? I can actually see, uh, yeah, one of the companies that were invested in a big one, Layer Zero, they use Pulley for investors, and we're able to see what shares have or what uh, token has invested, how much, when it's vesting, and the whole vesting period. So but, I guess, yeah. But I think like one thing that people often discount is it's like pretty easy to start like a new product. Not easy, uh, but yeah, go out. And yeah, do go, it. go and do it. Yeah, it's way not, not easy, but. Uh, police, you know, doing a few million dollars in revenue, servicing like a, a couple hundred clients, whatever, or maybe a few thousand, like, that's great. But I think like, what's really difficult is like building, like scaling with your users over a decade. And Card has shown that they've been able to do that and really mature as a company, you know, earn people's trust, trust over a decade, over a decade, you know, run people cap, run cap tables for companies that went from private to public. So they've, they really are, are like the like the kind of the gold standard of the cap table. And sure, maybe the space is now getting more competitive and there might be superior offerings. But I do think Carta has shown that they're like kind of, you know, the equivalent of the Bank of America, the JP Morgan of yeah. private cap tables. So yeah, there's going to be people who maybe eat into their market share. But over the long run, I think their business is going to continue to stay firm and grow. And grow so. Yeah, I also want to add that like, if you're on Carta, they already have like, so many, do you know how many startups are actually on the platform? Like something like 30,000 or? Okay, it is not easy to switch. So all these now startups that are in their pre-seed, seed that are, have already started using Carta for their cap tables, they're not gonna go ahead and take everything, all their employees, all their information off of Carta, move it to another one just to pay the same amount of money or around the same amount of money and get the same features. It's like, it doesn't make sense. Carta is still a very household brand name in the startup community. I think people are still gonna wanna use them for their cap table. There's, thousands and thousands of startups that 
start each year don't always obviously are successful. Nine out of 10 startups fail, but I don't think like, I think right away, if I was going to start a company, I know Carta, I still trust Carta. I think it's still well known. And I think once people are on the platform, they're already paying that recurring revenue that they're not going to go ahead and be like, Hey, now I'm going to go switch. Yeah. And you know, they have a big engineering team, big R and D budget. So yeah. And I think Henry now maybe taking the focus away from the secondary markets is market is going to double down on their core competencies. Mm -hmm. you know, the cap table management business, the phone admin business, but it will be interesting to see how they grow their revenue um, through this and how they are going to continue to expand beyond just cap tables. Cause I, like maybe at the peak, the cap table business is like a 300, 400, $500 million business in the next couple of years. Yep. But I don't know if it can be a billion dollar business. Um, mm -hmm. But um, I think Henry just put out in the article, what was their last valuation? Not the last valuation that you invested, but the last valuation that they- 8.5, they said, yeah. Oh, I thought they said. Or 8.4. No, maybe, maybe you're right. Yeah, yeah. 8.5. So it's like, and how much revenue did they say that they were getting from their cap table? It's, it's about 250 from the cap table, another 100 mil from fund admin, like 30 mil from private equity. So like- They still have a ton of different lines of business. So I guess like, real question, is Carta canceled? Is it done? No, Investment no, to zero. No, no, no. Carta's definitely mm -hmm. not. Ca Carta's here to stay. And I think through all this, they've shown that, like, as they've reacted to the community and people stood up for them, people were bashing them. Like, they are the institution for private companies, private funds, and have been a backbone of the startup VC ecosystem for over 10 years now. And yeah, they're here to stay. But I think yeah. the way that they grow has maybe changed a little bit and how they're going to continue to adapt and serve customers. Yeah, I think you just said it great. I think they're here to stay. I think they're still a great way if you're a startup to go ahead and manage your cap table. And I think, yes, they made a mistake. Uh, they probably should have access to that information. They probably should have controls in place. But also just know that they are also a startup in their self. Like they're learning as they go. They started this new offering. They shouldn't have had access. I don't know the employee. Maybe they worked at the other side of the house and they switched over. Maybe they really just didn't have controls in place. They mentioned it. It was a mistake on their end. I don't think that that means that you should fully shouldn't trust Carta. I think they're still here for the long term. As an investor, I'm so excited about what they're building. I still think they're making revenue. They're trying different products and they're learning as they go. So yeah, it's hard to like do it's like, like hard. To build a secondary market like that at scale and make it all, all and get customers and stakeholders. And get like it's extremely challenging. And I think they did uh I mean I would have liked personally to see them try to figure out how to adapt the secondary market because it just was so exciting. Mm -hmm. And I'm sad that like one bad experience on Twitter ended up taking them down. I would have liked to, you know, maybe they could have iterated, figure out how to improve, get the checks and balances in place, make sure there was a quote unquote Chinese wall. Um, and yeah, just figure out how to adapt the product. But uh, you know what, maybe that, that was never meant for them. There are other players, like you said, and they'll keep just doubling down their core competencies. And there's a lot of opportunity out there. Awesome. Guys, thanks for listening to the girls table slash the VC couple. Who knows anymore? I'm Alana. This is Aiden. Thanks so much. Would love to hear your comments about everything going on. Like, follow, subscribe, and see you next week. Peace.